Hey there, Saints. Pastor Dave here with another weekly devotional for you this Wednesday. Hope you're doing well. And uh, I wanted to read today from the message from uh, Genesis chapter 11, the story of the Tower of Babel. Might be a familiar story, but I wanted to read that because it's Pentecost uh, this past Sunday. And, and the two stories, I think, connect to each other in some interesting ways. So here from Genesis 11. At one time, the whole earth spoke the same language. It so happened that as they moved out of the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled down. They said to one another, come, let's make bricks and fire them well. And they used brick for stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower that reaches heaven. Let's make ourselves famous so we won't be scattered here and there across the earth. God came down to look over the city and the tower those people had built. God took one look and said, one people one language. Why, this is only a first step. No telling what they'll come up with next. They'll stop at nothing. Come, we'll go down and garble their speech so they won't understand each other. Then God scattered them from there all over the world, and they had to quit building the city. That's how it came to be called Babel, because there God turned their language into Babel. From there God scattered them all over the world. Well, saints, the, uh, the traditional understanding of that story is that uh, it, it, the problem is human pride and God sees what's going on and these, these people trying to become famous, trying to make a name for themselves and, and God has to put a stop to it. Uh, it's, it's kind of a strange story because there are elements of it that, um, you know, that just don't make sense. Why would God respond in this way when all the people have come together, all the people are united, they've got a common purpose, they're working together, these are all good things, right? Why would God step in and stop that? And it's hard to explain. Uh, but I think that, that once we connect it to Pentecost, it might come a little bit clearer. Uh, see, what's happening in the, in the time of Babel, all these people speak one language. There are no divisions, no, no ethnic, ethnic barriers, no language barriers. They are all working together, but there are also no limitations for them. And, and they think that they can do whatever they want. They can accomplish whatever they want by working together. They can equate themselves with God. They can reach heaven on their own. They're trying to work apart from God. And so God's response to that is to scatter them, to confuse them, to introduce maybe these artificial distinctions and divisions between them of, of having new languages, separate tongues, so that these people cannot come together in that way. But then at Pentecost, we see kind of the reverse, the mirror image of the Babel story where people come together from all different lands and tribes and tongues and they speak different languages. They can't understand each other. They're confused, but they come together in one place and God's spirit meets them there. And working through the apostles, God's spirit kind of acts as a translator, these tongues of fire and the, the apostles speaking the gospel in their own language are heard by all of these visiting people in their languages. And so there's this amazing miracle that allows for communication, cross-cultural communication. And the difference between these stories now we see is, is whether or not God is present. It's in Babel, there is no need for God. The people are working apart from God. They're, they're doing this all on their own and people separated from God may be able to accomplish quite a bit, but it's not necessarily anything good. Here in Pentecost, the people are connected to God through the Spirit, through the work of the apostles. They're connected to God, and so even then their distinctions and their separations and their divisions are healed. They are, they are reclaimed and, and reconnected because of the work of the Spirit. And saints, I think that connects a little bit to uh, what I talked about last week and the sort of unity that Jesus prays for, for his followers, the unity that the church is supposed to demonstrate to the world. I wonder if, you know, maybe along with that idea, it's worth us thinking about how God's spirit produces that connection and that unity for us. Because we know that we live in, in 
kind of a segregated and separated and divisive world. And that even within, uh, even within our own country, uh, even within uh, a group of people who all speak the same language, we can very easily run off to our own corners and, and get scattered and, and, and we identify ourselves by our political tribe, our ideology, our values, our uh, chief concerns. And when we do that, I mean, we're, we're doing exactly what happened at Babel. How could God's Spirit bring us back together? How could God's Spirit enable us to communicate with each other better? To, to talk to people who maybe speak a different metaphorical language, if not a different literal language but people who have different concerns, who have different perspectives and different viewpoints, sometimes it, it feels like we're talking past each other. How could God's Spirit help us to hear each other and to speak to each other? I wonder if you'll think about that this week, saints. I wonder if there are ways that you can find connection, connection points via God's Spirit with those who might not speak like you do. Pray about it. Consider it. That's your devotional for this week, and I hope it's helpful. Hope it's worth thinking about. I will see you again next week. Until then, take care. Be well. Keep praying for me. I'll keep praying for you. Bye-bye, saints.